everyone today we'll witness the proceedings of the parliament surprised aren't you i'll tell you today we'll have a mock parliament session to insight you about the procedure and the proceedings of the parliament generally we do not read much about the parliament unless there's a clash between the ruling party and the opposition party members or there's a budget session held but in fact the parliament is the temple of democracy the constitution of india that came into effect on 26 january 1950 provides for the bicameral parliament consisting of a president and two of the houses known as the council of states or the rajya sabha house of people the lok sabha the rajya sabha is known as the upper house and the lok sabha is known as the lower house now i'd like to ask you a question yes ashwar what is the maximum number of seats in the rajya sabha and the lok sabha in rajya sabha 245 and in lok sabha 552 yeah you are right the potential seating capacity of rajya sabha is 245 233 elected and 12 nominated the seating capacity of lok sabha decided by the constitution is 552 for in the first general election held in 1952 after the independence the lok sabha met for the first time on 13th may 1952 this is the black and white picture of the first session held and this is a of the recent session held now i'd like krishna man sir to brief you about the parliament thank you ashwat good morning everyone today i will be giving you a gist about the parliament the houses of the parliament that is the lok sabha and the rajya sabha their functions and a little something about the presiding officers in the parliament so the main function of both these houses is to make laws every bill has to be passed by both the houses and has to be signed by the president before it becomes a law the subjects over which the parliament can legislate or make laws are defense foreign affairs banking currency and coinage customs income tax etc speaking of the two houses the lok sabha and the rajya sabha the lok sabha holds the primacy over the rajya sabha in terms of financial matters on the other hand rajya sabha has a very special role to play in the parliament in enabling the parliament to legislate on state subjects if it is necessary in the national interest now let us talk about the presiding officers in the parliament each house has a spoon set of presiding officers in lok sabha the speaker and the deputy speaker are elected amongst the members while in the rajya sabha it's the vice president of india is actually the official chairman the indian parliament consists of two houses the lok sabha and the rajya sabha the role of the parliament is to select the national government to make laws to control to guide and to inform the government the executive of the indian parliament is further divided into three the president the prime minister and the council of ministers the president is responsible for the administration of the country the prime minister is appointed by the president and the council of ministers are appointed by the prime minister now i'll tell you about the layout of the parliament here is the speaker in front of the speaker is the lok sabha secretariat their work is to record the proceedings of the parliament to the right of the speaker is the ruling party members to the left of the speaker is the opposition party members In this session there are four types of questions asked. First are the start questions in which one expects oral answers to this. Next are the unstart questions in which answers are to be laid down on the table. Next are the short notice questions which are just like start questions but one expects consecutive questions. Next are the private questions which are asked individually to the candidates. Now I want an answer to this question. Yes Ashwat, how many times the parliament meets every year? Is it three times? Yes, you are absolutely right. The parliament meets thrice every year. First is the budget session from February to May. Next is the monsoon session from July to August. Third is the winter session from uh, November to December. Now let us talk about marshals. Marshals have a very special role to play in the parliament. They escort the speaker and also act like a computer that has access and knowledge about all the issues that takes place in the parliament. About the speaker, serving warrant is for five years. The speaker symbolizes power and dignity of the house. The speaker is elected from the list of senior Lok Sabha members prepared by the legislative section is submitted to the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs. Uh, Ashrat, I think we have given our audience a good dose of information. Yes, now let's move on to the next level of this activity, the, the mock session of the parliament. Honorable members of parliament, please pay attention. Honorable speaker is arriving.
honorable members i cordially welcome you all to the winter session of the youth parliament hope this session would be a very fruitful one in this session we will be discussing about the problems and the changes which we have to bring in our country our first business is oath taking secretary general please Puneet Kumar Mohanta, who stands elected from the Sangru constituency of Punjab, will now take the oath or affirmation. Sir, do you want to take the oath or affirmation? Oath, please. In which language do you want to take the oath? English. Having been elected a member of the lower house of the youth parliament, do swear in the name of God that I will be a true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India. as by law established that i will uphold to sovereignty and integrity of india and that i will faithfully discharge the duty upon which i am about to enter honorable members as we meet today it is my sad duty to inform the house of demise of a former colleague mulayan singh yadav sir i rise to pay my tributes to shri mulayan singh yadav whose death was mourned by all he is a solid figure and a great man he had been a great member of this parliament he seemed to be well and happy and therefore the shock of his passing away was all the greater i would like to extend my deep condolences to his family Groomed by freedom fighters, Mulayam Singh Yadav had been under the wings of activists and freedom fighters like Ram Manohar Lohia and Raj Narain. Sir, I rise to pay my tributes to Sri Mulayam Singh Yadav, whose death was mourned by all. He served as the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh for three terms. He is a socialist figure and the founder of Samajwadi Party. He started his career as an MLA from Sanyukta Socialist Party from Jeshwant Nagar in 1969. He he also served as the Minister of Defence. He rose to Uttar Pradesh politics as a socialist leader and an OBC stalwart. My deepest condolences to his family. The house must stand in silence for a while to express our deep sorrow. Secretary General, please convey this message to the family members. Now the question has starts. Question number one, not one. Shantan, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, sir, sir, here are the following resolutions. The House recommends that the government should take steps to combat effectively the spreading maintenance of drugs and narcotics, which are degenerative to the nation, especially the younger generation. Make institutional arrangements for the rehabilitation of drug addicts, Mr. Speaker, sir. Drug addiction is one of the major problems confronted by our country today. As time is running out. As time is running out, I will not take much more time of the house. But I also want to say a thing. There are four categories involved in this issue. They are the producer, the transporter, the street peddler, and finally the consumer who consumes the drugs. I am sure that the government would look at this problem. With the gravity it deserves. Honorable Minister of Family and Health Welfare, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, sir, I congratulate the mover of the resolution, Sri Shantan, and other honorable members who support this resolution for focusing on the health of the public opinion, which is one of the most visual and social health issue that the country is facing today. The purpose of my intervention is to place before the house the various efforts made by the various departments of the government to combat this serious issue. Sir, I would like to submit it law that its government, which is which brought a historic piece of legislation, narcotic drugs, psychotropic substance act, voluntary organisation programs have highly involved as per the certain schemes organised by the Minister of Welfare. A huge publicity campaign has been launched. The Finance Minister made availability of 15 lakhs for this mass education and motivational program. I would now like to call upon all the political parties. to start this mass movement all over the country Ma- movement involving young youth and the students women and public organizations to come forward and help the government to combat this serious issue 
which has potential to disrupt the very social fabric of our country undertaking the efforts by the government so through you i request to shantan to withdraw his resolution as the honorable minister said that the law has already been enacted therefore i am withdraw my resolution Has the honorable member leave the house to withdraw his resolution? Yes. Next question. Question number 1 or 2. Yeshwini, please proceed. Honorable speaker sir, the only thing I would like to point out is that there are many laws which try to cover one social evil, but the fact remains that many people in this country are still utilizing innocent children to materialize their vested interests by taking loopholes of the law. The government should seriously consider as to how the building blocks of the nation can be saved by passing rigorous punishments to the offenders. Honorable Minister of Women and Child Development, please proceed. Honorable Speaker sir, there is a plethora of laws and acts which ensure protection of the child from any kind of exploitation. For example, the Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986, 1993 etc implemented. The Supreme Court in a historic judgment also banned the employing of children in hazardous industries. Taking a due from the above judgment, employers of children should make a beginning by providing them with at least basic facilities conducive to a healthy working condition, and the employer should provide them medical benefit apart from housing, housing, insurance, recreational and educational facilities, and the employer should also take incentives such as. free meals books stationery and uniforms to sustain the child's interest so in my opinion we should start implementing the existing rules strictly instead of experimenting one after another rule next question question number 1 or 3 mauli please proceed honorable speaker sir will the minister of forest and environment be pleased to state The latest portion of number of elephants getting killed locomotive accidents on the railway track in the country whether keeping in view the present situation government have adequate plans to meet the situation and if no what are the measures proposed to be taken by the government to deal with the situation Honorable Minister of Earth Forest and Earth Science please proceed I was concerned towards the animal cause every animal kill is a great loss to the forest and to its owner About the concern of the government, the Animal Accident Reduction Group has formed to improve the analysis. The national highways and railway tracks are a source of wildlife mortality throughout the world. Among awareness programs have been conducted among the villages living on the national highways and railway tracks. The Ministry of Railway has suggested to instruct the drivers to reduce the speed and not to cross 30 kilometers per hour. My ministry has also given to install elephant rappelling system by using radio infrasonic sound by locomotive drivers and nearest control rooms. Next question, question number one or four. Janavi, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, sir, will the Minister of Tourism will be pleased to stay? My first question to the honorable minister is the foreign exchange earnings from tourists during the last years in the names of five countries on the top from the point of view of tourist arrival in India. My second question is what are the number of tourist arrival from different countries with foreign exchange earn and which is the country from where we earn the highest foreign exchange in the matter of tourist arrival. My last question is may I know what are the measures taken by the government to increase the tourist arrival in india honorable minister of tourism please proceed honorable speaker sir the answer to your first question is the estimated foreign exchange during the last 3 years were as follows in 2017 to 2018 2770 crores in 2018 to 2019 2860 crores and 2019 to 2020 crores and 3060 crores the top 5 countries in terms of tourist arrivals from different countries to india during 2019 were USA, UK, Bangladesh, Canada and Australia. And the answer to the second question is in the previous answer I have given the name of top 5 countries foreign ex- earned during 2019 from different countries like USA 24.58%, UK 14.01%, 
Bangladesh 11.78%, Canada 6.86%, and Australia 5.68% respectively. We had earned the highest foreign exchange from USA. Tourist arrivals has increased accordingly. And the answer to your last question is, yes, the Ministry of Tourism had taken some steps to increase the number of tourist arrivals to India. Launch of e-tourist visa for citizens of 44 countries, promotion of the destination to the incredible India campaign across the globe. Development and promotion of niche tourism products, creating an increased pool of trained manpower in hospitality and tourism sectors for delivery of quality service to the tourists. Thank you. Next question, question number 105. Harsha, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, will the Minister of Earth Sciences please cease to take? May I know what are the measures being taken to mitigate the impact of coastal erosion in the country? If so, the details there are in the future. Honorable Minister of Earth Science, please proceed. The Finance Commission has also made specific recommendations for the mitigation measures to prevent the eruption under National Disaster Management Fund and the resettlement of disabled people affected by the eruption under the National Disaster Response Fund. To operate these funds, the Commission has also suggested that the National Disaster Management Authority and the Ministry of Home Affairs may develop suitable norms for the mitigation measures to prevent the eruption. And both the Union and State Government develop a policy to deal with the extensive displacement of people affected by the eruption. At present, the National Disaster Management Authority is in the process of preparing suitable norms for the mitigation measures to prevent the eruption. Next question. Question number 106. Dorish, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, sir, will the Minister of Energy be pleased to state? May I know from the Honorable Minister whether the power production can be increased by 500 megawatts and the power coal worth 30 million tons can be saved through a fully exploitation of a new indigenously developed technology? Honorable Minister of Energy, please proceed. Sir, I agree that using of tidal energy, we will be able to save coal. And particularly, we can also generate 900 megawatts of energy in Kutch region. Next question. Question number 107. Uday, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, sir, will the Minister of Defense be pleased to state the detailed information about India-China border in Ladakh? How did the Defense Ministry of India make peace with the Defense Ministry of China? And if this was the first... Uh, attempt of China to occupy India, we should uh, take precautions from now to save our nation. Honorable Minister of Defense, please proceed. Honorable Speaker, sir, the Chinese side has made several attempts in transgazing the line of actual control in various parts. These actions of Chinese has been detected and appropriately responded by our armed forces. The House and the nation also paid homage to the brave soldiers who have made a supreme sacrifice. In our various high-level interactions with the Chinese side, even including in my own meeting with the Chinese Defense Minister last September, we have made it clear that the foremost need was to ensure peace in all the LAC points. Now, the House is adjourned to meet again tomorrow at 11 a.m.